everyone, welcome to another video of Fridays with the Ranger. I'm Ranger Bailey, back again filming from my office here, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a crafting project. As you might already know, Lewis and Clark were one of the most successful adventurers in U.S. history, which goes all the way back to over 200 years ago. They had a lot of knowledge and used the technology they had back then to navigate what's now known as the United States today. But the difference between explorers today compared to Lewis and Clark is that we have phones and computers to help us find where we need to go. Lewis and Clark had only a few supplies to help them navigate and log what they saw along the expedition. Can you think of what they might have used? So I do have a couple of replicas of the tools they would have used along the expedition, so I'll show a couple here to you. Uh, so this first one is one of the more complicated instruments they would have used, but I'm sure to Lewis and Clark it was probably a piece of cake. Um, but this is called a sextant, and it is a navigational instrument they used to find the longitude and latitude of the Earth in order to map what they saw for Thomas Jefferson. Um, now this device is a little bit smaller, I'm sure the original was big, um, but this also does have a couple of devices on it as well. Um, so like a little telescope, it's got a couple of mi microscopes, and then some sunshades, as well as a little ruler to help them. Um, but I'm sure it was definitely easy for them to use, but today it looks like it's a bit more complicated. So the next tool I have here is actually a compass. Um, now we still use these today to navigate, although you might not see it in this exact form. Um, compasses are found in all sorts of devices like your phone, watch, and even car. Um, this replica that Lewis and Clark used along the expedition is a bit big compared to what we actually use today. Um, so the actual compass sits in a wooden box like this um, to help prevent further damage of the glass that it sits in. Um, it was also made out of silver and brass to give it that shiny look. Um, and then they really use these to navigate everywhere, um, down the rivers, over the mountains, and just to make a safe journey back home. Now this next tool has got to be one of my favorite. Um, you might recognize it as what pirates use to see far away. Now Lewis and Clark unfortunately were not pirates, but they still use the telescope for the same reasons. Um, this instrument is made up of different sections of metal which made it retractable and easily stored. Lewis and Clark often used this to view places they were going or trying to avoid. And lastly, possibly the most important tool along the Lewis and Clark expedition were the journals of the men like in the picture shown. Without the journals the men carried, we would have never known the vast information the men of the expedition experienced across the new land they had just acquired in the Louisiana Purchase. These journals were mainly made from elk skins and were bound together with string to secure what they had written inside. It is also later found out that they would write quickly in their journals some days, so it was quite messy when they examined something for the first time. But once they had stopped for the evening or had time, they would often expand in further detail and better handwriting what they had seen days prior. What they carried throughout the day were called field journals, then later written in with their quill pens and ink, or preferably pencils to make it easier. With all the new kinds of information about the native tribes, land, and species that Lewis and Clark recorded in their journals along the expedition, this created many opportunities for scientists to observe new ways of learning. This is why it's so important to ask questions. Without Lewis, Clark, and the many other scientists of the world asking questions, we wouldn't have all the information we have today to the extent of learning new things. Um, and with that, today I will be teaching you how to make binoculars and journals just with objects from your own home. With these two tools, you'll be able to step into the shoes of Lewis and Clark and become your own kinds of scientists. You can even log what you see, hear, smell, and even touch, much like how the men of the expedition did. So let's get started. I'm going to start off with the binoculars, and what you'll need is a flat space to work on, two toilet paper cardboard rolls, some tape, or glue, any kind of string, one piece of construction paper, I'm going with green because it's my favorite color, a hole punch, and a pair of scissors. What you'll want to do first is set the two rolls side by side, and if you have glue, you're going to mark a line of glue onto the outside of one of the rolls, and then push the two rolls together, wait a couple of seconds to dry, and voila, you've got yourself the start of binoculars. For an alternative of glue, we can also use tape. For this, you can push the two rolls together as if you're using glue and waiting for it to dry, but instead, you're going to tape the two openings where the rolls meet so that they can stick together. Now that your two rolls are stuck together, you can keep them as they are, but you can also jazz them up a little bit by gluing a piece of construction paper around it, like what I'm doing now. 
I'm lining up the bottom of the piece of paper with the bottom of my rolls, and then I draw a line on the opposite side of the rolls to cut and get the height. Next, after the paper is cut, you're going to wrap the construction paper around the two rolls, then make a line on the paper where the end of it meets the other side, and cut off the excess. After this, you can glue or tape the construction paper onto the cardboard rolls, and you're almost done. Now we'll start with the string. Depending on how long you want it to be, the string should be long enough to drape around your neck and be easy to take off. What I'm using for the string is some twine I was able to find around the house, but remember, this step is optional. Now you're going to want to take your hole punch and poke holes on opposite ends of your two rolls. That way there's a path for the string to fit comfortably around your neck. What you're going to do next is tie a knot at both ends of the strings to secure them to the binoculars. And after you've secured the strings, your binoculars should be finished. You can also decorate them like how I did. And now, with these, you can take them outside and enjoy the views of nature, just like how Lewis and Clark did. So now let's move on to the homemade journal. You'll need one piece of construction paper, I'm going with green again to match my binoculars, a couple sheets of blank white paper, some string, a hole punch, a pair of scissors, and markers for decorating. First, let's start by taking the colored construction paper and folding it hamburger style, not hot dog style, hamburger style. After this, you're going to take a couple of sheets of the white construction paper and marking them where the middle is. Then you're going to take your handy scissors and cut down the middle. That way, when you fit them into the book, they match perfectly. The next step is to punch three small holes into the outer bind of the journal. That way, we can secure the string so the journals stay together. After that, I cut three separate strings, all about six inches in length, for the binding of the journal. Then I took the string and tied them to each of the three holes we punched previously. And now for the fun part, decorating! For my journal, I decided to write Bailey's Nature Journal. You can write whatever you'd like on the front to make it your own personal masterpiece, just like how we did with the binoculars. Are you ready to test them out? Let's take them outside and see how they do. Hey, sorry, didn't see you there. I was actually just looking for stuff I could write in my nature journal, just like how Lewis and Clark did along their expedition. Do you want to give it a try? Let's go. Ah, so it's a beautiful day here in Omaha, Nebraska. It's a hot summer day, the wind's in my hair, the sun's on my skin, and the birds are definitely chirping. And just imagine, this is how Lewis and Clark would have experienced it on their own journey as well. And you can even give it a try for yourself and write it in your journal as well. And I definitely challenge you to try and write with all of your five senses to see what you come up with. Well, maybe not taste, but that's besides the point. And just like that, you're your own explorer. So don't forget to share what you find and keep asking questions. I hope you enjoyed today's video and tune in next time for another Fridays with the Ranger. Bye everyone.